Now, it may come as a shock to some of you, but humanity's place on this planet isn't exactly a sure thing. The polar caps are melting, conflict is happening everywhere, and Fortnite dances are catching on. Heck, even if none of those were happening, an asteroid could hit us at any moment, right? So it's safe to say we don't need any more problems on this pretty unstable planet. But hey, at least we no longer share the same diseases as historical times, right? A time where little children had the lungs of a 50-year-old smoker and washing your hands before open wound surgery was considered a medical breakthrough. Well, turns out the illnesses from way back when are coming back in full force. You know, the same diseases you'd expect to see if you were Oliver Twist. Let's try measles for starters. Its earliest identified origin was from about 500 AD, and it was famous for the spots it leaves all over your body. It's safe to say measles has been iconic. Iconic in the sense that it's caused a high mortality count and that it happened frequently enough to terrify everyone. But where did the disease come from? Well, the 10th century Persian physician Raziz first theorized it came from cattle, with modern day science confirming that measles is a cousin to the rinderpest plague, a disease that targeted, you guessed it, cows. However, over time and with the growth of massive cities, the virus evolved to sustain itself on humans alone. Fun. Well, unfortunately, no one else thought so. Since by the time the Europeans had developed a resistance to the virus, they began spreading it to other regions through colonialism. This wiped out and decimated many indigenous tribes all over the world, most memorably the Native Americans. But hey, that was centuries ago, right? We've got a vaccine and everything now. There's no way we're still dealing with this, right? Well, that's where you're wrong, kiddo. As of 2019, a county in the state of New York has declared a state of emergency after 115 people were found to be infected with the disease. Not even the Second Amendment could protect Texas from being included since 10 individuals were found to be infected as well. But hey, just 10 sounds much better in comparison to Washington State's 36 infected, with even California and Illinois dealing with their own outbreaks. But hold your mooses, Canada, you don't have much to brag about either. Since in the same year so far, 27 cases have been found from the east to the west coast. But hey, we know what you're thinking. At least we aren't some medieval time peasants dying from the plague. Well, the thing is, you could totally be some modern time peasants dying from the plague because that's making a comeback. That's because in 2014 and 17, the country of Madagascar had two major outbreaks with a total of 119 infected, leading the World Health Organization to declare a regional emergency. What brought out these infections? Well, the usual. Rats, unsanitary conditions, and digging up grandma? Yep, some groups in Madagascar practice their ritual of bringing up the remains of their deceased relatives for celebrations before putting them back in the ground again. A practice that certainly did not decrease the likelihood of infection. The good news is, at least we don't have to worry about some Something that's occurring thousands of miles away, right? Just kidding again. In 2018, a young boy in Idaho was the first person in the United States to have been infected with the disease in 27 years. And in 2019, a 16-year-old girl in Oregon got infected with the disease after a hiking trip. Both individuals have since recovered, but we're guessing that just like climate change and world peace, we still haven't crossed dying of the plague off our global to-do list. So we've gone through the Victorian measles and the medieval plague. What else could possibly top off these two contenders? How about anthrax? First, what is anthrax? It is an infection caused by the bacteria Bacillus anthracus that produces some pretty freaky symptoms. Victims end up getting sores all over their bodies, chronic coughs, horrible fevers, and a whole lot of other nasty side effects. It's actually when the bacteria spreads to the lungs or the digestive tracts that it actually becomes fatal. Regardless, it's been a biological hazard for humanity since hunter-gatherer times, with even the ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians producing their own reports on it. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for this disease to gain its villainous admirers. It's been used in both world wars and is highly sought after material for extremists today. But hey, we know what you're thinking. Surely the Geneva Convention protects from such threats, and of course we're all prepared for another outbreak. Well, yes, but also actually no. Turns out that anthrax is still a pretty massive threat for the world in a way no one expected it to be. 
This because deep under the Siberian ice, millions of animal carcasses originating from several time periods have been preserved, each full of anthrax, spores, and other unknown pathogens. In 2016, 13 people were infected and 1,500 reindeer were killed when the diseased decades-old corpse of a deer thawed out from the ice. Also in 2017, a young boy and his grandmother passed away due to an anthrax infection, while dozens reportedly became ill with the diseases as well. The culprit? A centuries-old reindeer carcass. Damn it, Rudolph! More concerns stem from the fact that local nomads have traditionally buried their infected deceased in the snow, snow that is now melting due to climate change. But hey, it's not like it's our fault this is happening. It's not like some of us have been not vaccinating our children against the principles of modern science, or digging up diseased-ridden animals for certain rituals, or heating up the planet with our carbon emissions and use of pollutants. These old-timey diseases totally come out of nowhere. Nope, just kidding. It's totally our fault. We're doomed.